1,400 games of Madden 17 this year, which is insane. I mean, the guy has played so many games of Madden, and he's going up against young Kiv, who's put in about 308, but you can't doubt the fact that uh, Kiv definitely does his lab work at home. Yeah, D. Jones is a guy that has the second most wins on the ladder when it comes to qualifying for these events, but he's also a guy that feels like he's still trying to gain the respect of his peers. A lot of the top players here don't think D. Jones is on their level, and that's something that frustrates him. He's here not only for the cash and the money and the glory, but he also wants the respect. All right, let's take a look at D. Jones' money pick, starting with Champ Bailey right there at yeah, cornerback. Yeah, tip drill Champ Bailey. He's fast, catch the ball off the tip. You got Deion Sanders at the 96 overall Madden Bowl edition. Marvin Harrison, motivator, who gives everybody on the team plus two catch and rating. We see that Chad Johnson everywhere with the playmaker. And that 99 Donovan McNabb with the gunslinger ability, which allows him to have a quick release and throw a little bit more mustard on the ball. Absolutely. D. Jones locked in right there as you're looking at him on your screen. A very serious competitor. And now we switch over to Young Kiv from Seattle, Washington. The ninth ranked player in the Madden Championship Series ranking points. Young Kiv has been consistent. About as consistent as they come. Yeah. Showing up to all the live events. Yeah, the 19-year-old Shea Kivlin from Seattle, Washington, made every EA major event this year, including a club series regional. He is considered by everybody in the Madden community to be one of the top players in the world. And as D. Jones is out here trying to fight for his respect from this, their, his peers, young Kiv is a kid that blatantly has his respect, but now he needs to back it up. This will be an exciting one. Here's Young Kiv's money pick, starting with Night Train Lane right there. Yeah, my favorite corner in the game. 95 speed, six foot one, can cover your hand, take your head off. That's my kind of defender, Deion Sanders. Tim Brown, we haven't seen a lot of him uh, so far in this tournament. Randy Moss with that playmaker ability. We've seen plenty of him. And then Steve McNair, the legend, with that conductor ability, again, that allows Kiv to make multiple hot routes at the line of scrimmage without having to play a cadence animation. With that, RG, let's take a look at your scouting report brought to you by Xbox. For D. Jones, it show us the improvements. He said not qualifying for our last two major events really identified some weaknesses in his game, mainly being able to blitz and picking up the blitz. This was a kid that, this was a guy that before had the worst blitz percentage out of everybody in the tournament. He says he's changed that. So I want to see it and I want to see if it works. So let's see, let's see what you did to improve your game and let's see if it works. For Kiv, it's can he be successful with the pass? He averages the most passing yards per game, runs the ball at the fewest percentages, but guess what? D. Jones is has the best pass defenses statistically. He lets up the least amount of yards per game. So we have the number one passing offense going up against the number one passing defense. Let's see if Kiv can put up some numbers on that number one defense. It's definitely going to be an exciting game. We've got D. Jones versus Young Kiv. D. Jones will be wearing those Broncos white uniforms. Young Kiv in the Seattle Blues. And another key to the game that we didn't have on there that I want to call out, AJ, it's don't go on tilt. And that's for both of these players. When you're going up against a rivalry match, preferably against an opponent that you're not too fond of, it's easy to get frustrated. Neither one of these players can let that happen. They both have a history of it happening, and they got to keep their cool if they want to be successful in this match. D. Jones, as many of you remember, in that game where he uh, did not get the handshake from Young Kiv or in that tournament, the Madden Classic, he actually went on uh, to make it to the final. He had to go through problem as well. He made it to the final, ended up losing to Spot Me Please in the final. But then he did not make a live event since then. So RG, like you said, he's been toying with his game a little bit, tinkering with what he does on defense. Let's see how it works for him. He starts on offense right now, though, and young kid <laughs> screaming from that right side. And it's going to be third and six. If we saw that, though. D. Jones had a wide receiver running wide open deep down the middle of the field. It would have been a touchdown, but the pressure got there right before him. But that was a good money play by D. Jones. And if you're Kip, you need to remember that play and be ready for it later because that was for sure a touchdown had he gotten the ball off. A nice throw there by McNabb, who completes the pass for a first down. D. Jones back in the gun. Pressure from the right side. Harrison with the grab, picks up a first down. 
Stopped at the 49. And the 29-year-old Derek Jones, he is playing with a huge chip on his shoulder like we talked about. Not only have the players not believing in him, but he said one of the most insulting things that he saw was our own S. Gibbs picking against him on twim, saying that kid was going to win by two scores. D. Jones made a point to tell us that he wasn't happy about that. He wasn't happy with Gibbs, and he was going to make him eat his words. So let's see what happens here. But D. Jones, man, try, tr trying to get at a lot of the haters and show them what he's all about. Yeah, Farles and Gibbs have been doing this week in Madden for a long time. You can catch it every Wednesday night. Right now, we got to throw it to Zach, who has a Madden game break. Joke starts it out with the punchline. First play of the game, 75-yard touchdown. He's up 7-0 over Goes Madden in those Washington uniforms. Those crew members. And you talk about Gibbs and Falls and their twin. Those are two guys that D. Jones looked up to as he was getting involved in the competitive circuit. He used to watch Twim to learn about the circuit and really, you know, learn about competitive Madden. So for the guys that he looked up to, to say he was going to lose by more than two scores. That didn't sit well with him. He's got something to prove out here. I think so. It, it, it's tough when you hear guys who have been uh, talking about Madden and contributing in the community as long as Farles and Gibbs, and Gibbs just showing him no respect. So uh, it was I think great. he's got a chip. It Let's was see what great he does when with we it. were interviewing him. It was the first thing he did was call out poor Gibbies. There we go, though. Look at them. Both of them doing a good job so far, A, of keeping their composure, not getting too excited, not letting their emotions get the best of them. And remember, the Skimbo Mo rivalry is a rivalry of respect. This is a rivalry between two players that have gone out of their way to say they don't care for one, one another too much. They're not fond of the other player. This is big. Fourth down early, A. You hear, uh, Momentum play. Here, young kid, capping it. D Jones right now for going for it right now on fourth and two. He wanted him to kick the field goal. Uh -oh. Hands it off Kevin to Allen, and he stops him right there. Yeah. And Kivington calling him stupid, and he's not saying it in a nice manner either. Oh, no, look at Kiv just shoot through the gap, hit stick, give me the ball back, and now the pressure's on, D. Jones. Wow. So big stop there by Young Kid to take over on downs at the 26. And this is the first we will see of Young Kid's offense. A few hot routes and audibles right now from the line of scrimmage. Steve McNair. Play action, throws to the left, completes it to Moss. Nice tackle there by Champ Bailey. And you saw all those hot routes he's making at the line of scrimmage, AJ. A lot of competitive Madden players do their best Peyton Manning impression. When you're at the line of scrimmage, you can hot route these receivers to a basic route tree. If you want to put them on a curl, a slant, an out route, you can do that, and that's what you're seeing a lot of during pre-play. Anytime the quarterback points like you're seeing right there, that means he's making an adjustment to one of the receivers. McNair looking over the middle, finds Montgomery, and Young Kiv has another first down on that completion. This is Key Jones, as you see right there. Running that nickel. He said he would blitz more. Let's see uh, if he can actually put some more pressure on <laughs> Good <read>. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing at each other. Key yep. Jones decides to chirp back, throws his... Uh, Talking Kip with throws into the back of D. Jones linebacker. Talking with Skimbo before the matchup, he did make a good point saying if D. Jones is now just switching to the nickel blitz as we saw him run on that last play right there, it's going to be hard for him to fool young Kiv against this because young Kiv already practices against the best in the world running nickel blitz against him. So he's going to be very prepared for it. The question is, has D. Jones practiced nickel blitz against da! elite players that know how to move the ball against it? Da, 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 da. And Kiv looking at him, talking. He's literally looking at him across the screen, AJ, and saying dot, 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 dot. RG, we talk a lot about dots. It's definitely some community lingo. Nobody's got more slang than uh, the Madden community. 
Explain to uh, some of those new to watching what a dot is. A dot is when you get a receiver open in space and you throw it to him and you make the catch. A nice, crispy dot. But there's a difference between saying dot, dot, dot after you make a good play and looking your opponent right in his eye and saying dot, 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 dot. dot. A little dot, disrespect dot, there. Dot, and then there he goes. Stupid. Stupid. You see this? You see this? this is, they don't like each other, eh? We're not putting so, on. We're not making this stuff up. This is a real rivalry match we got going here. Heated rivalry. Heated so far early here. It's only in the first quarter. Kid. I don't think so. Trying to run it in. D. Jones says no thank you. Yeah, D. Jones, one thing we know, he's going to be prepared for a lot of different situations. He's a situational football type player, and I fully expect him to have stingy defense on the goal line. That's something he's going to come with. I don't know about this look, though. There's a whole lot of room right here in the middle of the field. You can just run that ball right off that gut, right there. And that's what oh, he tried. No. But D. Jones snuffs it out in the backfield. Well, I guess I would have got blown up if I was the offensive coordinator on that play because that's exactly where I would have went to run the ball. But D. Jones just ready for it. Sometimes you make people think you're giving them something and then boom, you just take it away last minute. Good disguise by D. It's definitely part of it, disguising the play, making them think they have something they don't. And Play action here, looking in the back of the end zone. That one, not a dot. Come on. <laughs> we, see, we hear sometimes calling so it a Todd. And a Todd is just basically the opposite of a dot. An <laughs> opposite of a dot right there. Kip quick tight them. It was a good play call. Play action. Had the post route coming over the middle. Looked like he had some space, but unable to execute the throw as it sails out of bounds. But Kiv's smart thing takes his three, and the reason why I love him taking the three right there is because that's free points. He, he forced the stop early on, got the ball back, and at least made something out of that stop. It stinks when you get a stop, AJ, and you don't turn it into points. Kiv, good job to turn that stop. I'm going to call that a little victory for D. Jones, too. Yes. Because the way Kiv was moving the football there until he got into the red zone, looked like he was oh, wow. going to score easily. I that one is almost picked off. Read. That's a good point. <laughs> it's already putting hard flats out there. <laughs> D. Jones, <laughs> I love hearing these guys talk to each other. Eh? It's fantastic. This is the play. Got D. Cooks, Jones. Johnson, Davis, and Harrison lined up for D. Jones. Yeah, and you got to watch right here. This is the route that got open earlier in the game. Oh, it's picked up that time, though. Kev all over it, and what a hit. <laughs> so Big hit. hit. That's Sean Taylor. He's been known to lay people out. A couple times, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he does, definitely did that in his career. He does things like that for sure. Third and ten. He's in love with this play, eh? D. Jones back in this gun. Three seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Better watch that pressure. Motions is running back out right in hopes of picking up there some of that is. pressure. He picks up one, but it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Comes That's in good. free. We, we saw it coming. Hunt the ball. He's going to have to punt this rock. Thank you. Fourth and 20. Get your boot out, D. Jones. D. Jones visibly frustrated in this one. And, and let's remember, D. Jones won the first matchup between these two in the Madden Classic and went on to make it to that I championship game. So he had a lot of success, though he doesn't have... A lot of players hate on him and say he's a DC only type player. This is a dude that's been very consistent and has been able to make some noise in these events. Let's go. Definitely has. He, he was much better in the first event, obviously, the classic making it all the way to the final. But then it was progressively worse, actually, getting eliminated earlier and earlier in the other two majors. So he's got some things to prove here in this last one. Man. Let's take a look at the replay on that pass there by Young Kiv. Kiv's offense looking about as crispy as that Gucci sweater he's wearing right now, eh? Because he is just moving the rock. Had a Gucci jacket last time at the Madden Challenge, and now he's got a sweater this time. Yeah. When, when, when you're winning all types of Madden money at the age of 19 years old, you can kind of do stuff like that. I mean, this is a guy, AJ, that's already won $25,000. Look at that. Look at that jacket. You got some flowers right there. Gucci'd up. When you've won $25,500 thus far uh, on Madden and you're only 19 years old, you can go out and buy stuff like this. I mean, that, that's a fantastic piece of clothing right there. 
Come on. Definitely got some style on and off the field. Yeah, Picks up another first down. And remember, he's 19 years old. He's won $25,500 thus far in the tournament. But we're also playing in this tournament that's for an additional $500,000 prize pool. So that number can grow a lot before the end of this event. Pretty sure. Yeah, I can buy yeah, a lot could, more jackets. Win a lot more jackets. <laughs> Definitely made a lot more money this year than I did when I was 19. Oh my God, I don't think me having $25,500 uh, at the age of 19 would have been a good thing, eh? Guess what, RG, I think uh, Young Kiv just wants to win that $100,000 uh, this, this yeah, match championship. Well, he's on his way if he can make it a two possession ball game right here against D. Jones. Not forget to goal. He also gets the ball at halftime. So he's up two possessions now with that touchdown A. And he's also going to get it at halftime. He's in complete control right now. He said it himself to D. Jones when he was capping to him earlier. He said, uh, you're caged. Yeah, and, and he told us, I mean, he was talking. When we interviewed these guys, he was talking pretty nasty about, about D. Jones. He really has a lack of respect for Derek's game. He said there's no way he's going to get out of the group. He's a draft champions only player. He's not good in salary cap, and he's going to go 0-3. I think he was being a little bit harsh right there, but th that's the type of respect he has for Derek's game. Not much. There you go, D. Jones. Like so delayed. D. Jones completing that pass, and with that, we're going to throw it to Zach for a quick Madden game break. Joke, tell it again. Fourth and goal, he's already up seven. Tosses it out left, that's door set. Punches it in, he's up 14 nothing in the second quarter. The joke with Go's number so far. Wow. Oh, and Go's kind of Go's kind of <laughs> said he felt that way going into this group. He was worried about Joke the most. Uh, felt like he could beat these other two guys, but he he was worried the most about Joke because he's played him so much. Well, Joke's one of these guys that a lot of people in the community think he's a top five player in the world. However, his problem is is he gets to the, these live events and lays an egg. So he it needs to show that he is not only an online type <laughs> player and that he can get it done on the big stage. Doing it thus far against his uh, former lab partner in Ghost. But we got ourselves a ball game right right here, A. Eh? And D. Jones is going to have to buckle down on some of his executions. He had a play uh, a few plays ago where he had a blatant running lane and he just wasn't able to get through it. And as you see, finds himself in another fourth down situation. This is his third fourth down uh, already in this game. So he, whatever he had ready on offense, it's not looking too good thus far. Yeah, D. Jones has uh, not been able to pick up the blitz very well. He said he Jokes had a blitz pickup. He's not been able to stop a lot of those. As that one screams from the right edge. It's big. By Young Kiv. Big fourth and nine. Big fourth and nine here for D. Jones from the 50. Calls a timeout. Yeah, good timeout. So he knows this is a big play right here. Get yourself. This is a huge momentum type play, A, because it, if you're D. Jones, you get some points on the board, you're all the way back. But if you're young kid and you can force a stop and then get a score, you're all the way in control. This is the type of play where you can grab up momentum, A. I call it momentum plays. Watch the rush. Picked he picks up. up that one with his running back, and the That's second guy back. comes through, stops him. D. Jones. Cringing a little bit as he turns the ball over on downs. <laughs> Kiv looking very calm though. Kiv has done a fantastic job too as the season's progressed. Is he's a guy that we saw, AJ, that would have some problems where he would go on tilt and get very frustrated with himself and it would always almost lead to his demise. We see him up there right now. I don't know if it's just because he's winning or not, but he's been doing a great job of keeping his cool. And that was a theme that we saw the last time we saw him too. It's something that he's constantly improving on. And I really like to see that from the young boy, young Kiv. Young Kiv back on offense again here, third and second, third and two from the 42. Throws it quickly over oh. the left side, it's knocked out, and we're gonna check in with Zach real fast. A big drive from Gro goes to get three right before the half because he gets ball after the half, so we'll keep you up to date on that one, AJ. We got a big fourth and two, eh? This is big, big fourth down here for Young Kiv. This is big for D. Jones. Out of the gun, he motions Montgomery. Seven on the play clock. 
McNair looking left, trying to playmaker somebody, and he's boxed up by D. Jones. Wow, you cannot hold the ball that long, eh? especially on a fourth down. You need to get it out there and give your receivers a chance to make a play. And that's a huge stop by D. Jones right there. Gets himself back in the ball game and a chance to get all types of momentum. D. Jones with a big stop there on defense, but can he get the ball moving on offense as we hit the two-minute warning here of the first half? He hasn't uh, shown us much on offense so far. Yeah, besides a couple uh, post routes over the middle that he completed, he had the one play on the first play of the game where he had a wide receiver, a wide open deep down the field, but couldn't get the pass off. Just poor execution so far by D. Jones on offense. Off his back heel, trying to complete that one is McNair, and he does not loose by Ballantyne. So third and 10 now from the 42. We're under two minutes here in the first half. Young Kiv leading this one 10 to nothing over D. Jones if you're just joining us here. We are in the Madden Championship. Group stage. Over the middle and that is picked off by Night Train Lane. And that's that night train lane that we talked about when we went through their top five players. That you look at him, he's a big body that can run with you, and he can jump up and make plays in coverage. And if you run at him, he'll also knock your block off. The legend, night train lane. I never, that's before my time. I never got to see him play in real life, but you know what? I got to see him play in Madden. It's pretty good. I think Madden Ultimate Team has allowed a lot of people to uh, educate themselves on NFL history a little bit with some of these older legends you're yeah. able to play with in the game. It's a really good point. I, I'm, I'll admit it, I had no idea who Paul Krause was before I saw him in Ultimate Team. 81 different legends. It's a nice uh, roster of legends you have to choose from. Good play. I've seen a lot of guys using Randy Moss as one of their legends. He's on the younger end of legends. We all saw him play. But oh. uh, there's... 29 of the 32 guys in this tournament have Randy Moss on their roster, RG, but the question then begs, why don't the other three? That's the question. Is I, Why wouldn't you have Randy Moss on your roster? I mean, unless you're looking to just pound that rock. Uh, I don't understand it. If I was playing in this tournament, Moss would definitely be on my roster. His cap probably needs to go up a little bit, huh? Maybe so, maybe so. One of the problems why, why you, I think you see him on every roster is uh, pounding the rock and, and running the ball is, is the main part of your game plan. It's almost a lost art in Madden. Seen a couple people make a living off of power O, but not on this level of play. Oh, the ball's a big fumble. Oh, that hurts. But it's what Jones. <laughs> T. Jones almost had it. Let's take a look at that again, RG. This is Steps up into the pocket, completes it to Montgomery who then falls back on top of it. So it's an incomplete pass, a fumble, and then he recovers his own fumble. That was a First down. big play for Kip. D. Jones trying to get the momentum back. He clicked on and took his head off. Ball came out, but Montgomery able to recover and get his hands back on it. Very fortunate for Kip right there. Second quarter action here in Group B of the Madden Championship. Young Kip looking over wow. the middle. He has his what man. Round combo. What a and it's combo. Brown, Tim Brown almost into the end zone, just short. I would love to cue that up. Inside, that was a great play. Inside 25 seconds right now. Young kid in the QB sneak. Look as he falls forward into the end zone for the touchdown. That's Steve McNair. And Young kid is going to take a three-possession lead. And, and that's big. And the sneak was the sneak was what got him in the end zone, but Here's the play that set up the sneak right here. You see Ocho Cinco sucks the user defender to the outside, and then you got a deep in route over the middle. And if you're going to go guard my receiver on the sideline, I know you're not user defending in the middle of the field. And Kiv makes the perfect read. That was a great setup on the corner strike play by young Kiv. That was a world-class setup right there. High-level Madden. So young Kiv now up 17 to nothing in this one. I don't think we saw this one coming necessarily. Th th this was the consensus amongst the players though. They all felt like that D. Jones was not gonna be able to handle young Kiv in salary cap and that's what it feels like thus far. With that, we're gonna throw it to Zach for a quick Madden game break.
goes Madden, got the ball after the half, went downfield and was able to punch it in for the touchdown. Now trails Joke just 14-10. So goes Madden, He's starting to uh, make this respectable. He really wants to beat uh, his former lap partner, Joe. Well, one of the things I love about Ghost Madden's story, AJ, is he's one of the guys that qualified here without making an EA Live event. He did it by just grinding ladders, going to underground challenger events to get, get himself some points. And uh, that's very admirable because it shows that there's so many different avenues for these players to make these Madden Championship events. Uh, it's a great story we got there in Ghost Madden. That was, is thrown incomplete for a first down. So D. Jones is going to have three seconds remaining here, and he's got it at the 42. He might be able to take a shot. He's going to go for a field goal. It's big. going to be a long field goal attempt. Decides to take a timeout, though. Can't hit it. Couldn't hit it. Out of his uh, range for his kicker, so he's going to go for it right now. Yeah, he doesn't have Going to take a shot downfield. Out of the gun, McNair. Looking deep, double coverage. Trying oh. for the swerve, no bueno. <laughs> Got to it. Chad Man. Johnson, and that wraps up the first half, RG. D. Jones trailing in this one 17 to nothing. Yeah, I mean, Young Kiv has just been all over him thus far, and the problem for D. Jones is they're not making plays when he needs it. He gets a hit stick, gets a fumble, can't recover it right there before half infield, oh, can't hit the long field goal, throws a Hail Mary, gets his hands on it, the receiver doesn't hold on to it. Things just not going good for D. Jones thus far in this game, and Kiv in complete control. Yeah, Kiv in complete control right now, but let's toss control over to Dave and Rico right now. Thanks a lot, guys. Rico, we knew this was going to be a classic, but Kiv came out swinging both on the sticks and in terms of capping. He's looking right at D. Jones. What'd you see out of the youngster? Absolutely. From now on, his name is not young Kiv. He is grown man Kiv. He has come to play. He's letting everybody in the world know that they should take notice on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Grown man Kiv is here to stay. Let's go down to the wall with Zach Farley. Zach, what do you got for us? Dave, I've got action in this joke against Go's game. Joke's starting to get emotional, as we know he can from time to time. Early in the game, he used it to his advantage. Right now, I don't know if it's helping him. But the first play of the game, five minutes to go, first quarter, joke. Unloads on his boy, Go's Madden. Here's how he did it. He sent his receiver, Chad Johnson, out into motion. What that allowed to happen was him to get behind the defense. Goes Madden, did, it, did not see it coming. And at the snap of the ball, he actually uses a play-action fake, delivers the strike downfield, and Ocho Cinco is able to go all the way for the early touchdown in this one. Joke was looking good early. Ghost is coming back. I'll keep you guys up to date on the rest of that one, Dave. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Zach. I appreciate that. Don't forget, this is just the beginning. This is just the first weekend of group play. Next Saturday and Sunday, groups E, F, G, and H. This is just going to keep on going, Rico. This is never really going to stop, is it? I hope it does. It's just, <laughs> his action is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. And coming up later today, we still have more games from Group B. Right now, we're watching Young Kiv and D. Jones. We've got D. Jones and Joke and Kiv and Joke to finish out our day. Right now, Drea is on the field with Young Kiv. Drea? Definitely, Dave. Well, Young Kiv, obviously no love lost between you and D. Jones. RG talked about it a little bit. Why don't you respect his game? Just elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, it's not him as a player. It's just what he does mm -hmm. online and stuff. But um, I'm just going to come out here with the W and move on to the next game. There you go. Confidence will lighten it up a little bit. Of course, your shirt is another topic of conversation. RG was talking about it. I know it's Gucci because I asked you about it when I walked in today. So are you willing to take RG shopping, maybe spice him up a little bit and, you know, kind of liven his game up a little bit? Um... Maybe. I'm not paying for it, but if, <laughs> if he's got the check, then I will. Okay, so if he's got the check, we're good to go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's send it back to AJ and RG. Thank you, Drea. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> young Kiv, not going to show his hand too much on uh, the rivalry, but uh, you can definitely tell uh, there's no love lost between those two. Hey, I'm just excited that I got a new stylist. I mean, my, I'm going to fire my girlfriend, and uh, once I get paid, me and Kiv are going shopping. 
I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold you to that. I can't. I can't wait to see that. Uh, uh, actually, I don't want to be there when you tell her that she's fired. Um, yeah, but uh, sorry, Trace. Yeah, I don't know if I could pull off the floral design. To be honest, RG. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, know about you either. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's my. I don't know if that's my swag. Uh, let's uh, jump here into the second half, though, RG. We've got a pretty uh, lopsided game so far, and Young Kiv is going to take it in the second half, but. Uh, let's see what D. Jones can do on defense. His defense hasn't looked horrible, uh, but right now it's just his offense that's struggled. Yeah, in this situation right here, coming out down 17 nothing to start the first half, you need to come out and get something to give you some momentum, a fumble, an interception, sack fumble, a pick six, four and out, and a touchdown. You need to get something going. D. Jones, if you want to take out a player the caliber of Young Kib, because right now it's just complete control from the Kivington. Throw to the flats there is complete. And he is brought down for a gain of four. And that's, Young Kib's already on two clock. Yeah, that's absolutely a good point right there. Eh? He is chewing the clock already taking down the play clock as fast as he can. And what the true clock mechanic is, is it's a feature at the play call screen that legitimately lets you uh, take the play, the play clock and instead of it being 30 seconds, it quickly takes 20 seconds off of it and makes it 10 seconds. So, as you see again, right there. Definitely makes it tougher to call uh, your hot routes. But Kiv is a pro, I am not. No, he does a good job of clock management yeah, here. Yeah, there you see it right there at the play call screen. Oh, they're too quick at the play call screen, but it's called Chew Clock. Simply press the LB button when you're at the play call screen. You go into that mode, and uh, it doesn't do anything but just make it easier for you to kill the clock in a quicker manner, and oh my goodness. And there is another touchdown by Young Kiv. That one a wide open Randy Mott, so he's going to take a 24 to nothing lead here in this one. And I, I got to wonder what this is going to do for D. Jones' confidence because when we talked to him um, prior to this event, as you see Randy Moss just wide open, uh, D. Jones was telling us, like, hey, I haven't been losing any games in my preparation for this event. I've played so many games, no one's going to put any, show anything that I haven't seen. And he was genuinely feeling good about his odds to go 3-0 and in this group. But now you find yourself down 24 nothing was still almost a half to play, and then two more games to play into this group. It's going to be interesting to see if D. Jones is able to regroup from this, because things are blatantly not going his way. Another handoff there to Howard by D. Jones. D. Jones typically doesn't invest much into his running backs. We saw him perform very well at the Madden Classic with a base running back in draft champions. Looks a lot more in his wide receivers. McNabb throwing way under pressure. Can't complete it to his running back. He has just not uh, been dotting people up today. And it's never a good sign, A, when you see players throwing, throwing the ball away or throwing in the coverage when they have receivers open. The tight end on the drag route was wide open going across the middle of the field for an easy first down. And D. Jones failed to recognize him. Hand off to Howard there, who does pick up a first down on that one. So D. Jones keeps this drive alive. Yeah, a little tempo offense, a little hurry up. You need points in a hurry. So a way to get it going. You've also got the option, besides two clock, you've got the option uh, to hurry up. And that's what D. Jones is doing. Can tend to wear out your players a little bit. Super easy for any of our beginner users watching at home. When the play ends, you just hold down that Y button, and that'll get your offense into a hurry-up tempo where they'll run to the line of scrimmage, set up in the play that you were just in uh, on the play before. So if you want to run some hurry-up, just hold that Y button as soon as the play ends. Jones out of the gun again from his this opponent's 41. Johnson, right over. That's who you got to watch out for. McNabb cannot find anyone. He just gets it away as he is brought down. We saw that go the other way in our game with Killer Mike, where Killer Mike actually lost a fumble that way to Sirius Mo. And this is rough when you're D. Jones. You're down 24 0 against a big hit. And there it is, the sack fumble. Sack fumble for six. Oh, my God. 
When it rains, it pours. And Madden, and he pulls the... Oh, he's trolling. He pulls the scheming. Scheming from the Madden Challenge. Let's take a look at that fumble again. As Deion Sanders just screams from that left edge. Oh, man. And then Kibble is going to try to dab into the end zone. He'll decide to QB sneak instead. So it works out better for him than it did Schemen in the Madden Challenge, where Schemen actually turned the ball over on downs from the goal line. Well, well they say revenge is a dish best served cold day. And uh, the it is pretty chilly in this it, room. It's I'm not pretty lie. chilly right now in here. I mean, he, he just brought him an ice plate. Like, this, this is ridiculous. Up 31 to nothing. You want to talk about young Kiff coming out here and making a statement. That's exactly what he's done thus far. One match that I think is going to be extremely interesting is I can't wait to see young Kiff and Joke play in this group, AJ, because those are two guys that amongst the community are considered top five, top ten players. Um, so that's going to be an interesting matchup later in this group, something we have to look forward to. You know, I love nothing more than S. Gibbs being wrong about things. But uh, so far, he's been pretty accurate about this one. Yeah, he has a smile on his face, let me tell you. I mean, he told D. Jones he was going to lose by two scores. Um, yeah, 31 nothing. Uh, S. Gibbs right on the mark. Another oh, fumble. Oh, my gosh. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. Bye-bye. Oh, my gosh. Is it over? And, and, no, well, That's here's the thing. Kiv's asking if it's over, and uh, we do not enforce the skunk rule in Madden Championship play uh, here at the finals. So in most situations in the Madden game, they would throw the towel, call this a wrap, uh, but not here at the Madden Championship. Uh, D. Jones is going to have to sit here and continue to take this beating unless he's going to stand up for himself at any point and uh, put a stop to it. Not looking likely so far, though. Let's not forget, D. Jones is also still got two more games. He needs to make this a little closer due to point differential, but that time Kiv does truck into the end zone. And you bring up a fantastic point right there, A, is how point differential does matter in these groups. So D. Jones finds himself in a really bad spot, but keep in mind, he is not going to be held to the 38 point differential. The match point differential in group play is 24 points. So no matter what, he can't have a worse differential than 24. Um, at that point, you're not playing, at this point, you're not playing to win this game. Uh, you're playing to not get the max 24 point differential, and that's even a stretch. That's gonna be tough. 38 to nothing, I mean, it's a blow, this is a cur job, this is a blowout. Young Kiv, he is mic'd up, he sounds like a wrestler right now. Saying, let this man, let this man walk, he's got a family, he's just, Maybe they could put this Enjoying behind. Enjoying this. Maybe if the, the rivalry gets put behind them after this. You know, they're both one and one. Uh, Something tells me that's not going to happen, RG. I'm just being optimistic. You know, I love sportsmanship. I, I would love to see a handshake. I, I would love also, to see it. I do love a good rivalry, though. They're fun. It's a lot of fun. I didn't get your take. RG, or, uh, Rico said no on the handshake. What are your, what's your thought? I'm going for the yeah. I'm, go I'm going yes. Uh, I I'm going for it. Yeah, a blowout like this, there's not going to be a, a whole lot of a whole lot of tension there. I mean, <sighs> throwing back to the Madden Classic, D. Jones actually won that one. Offers the hand to oh. Kiv and Kiv. No. <laughs> oh man, Kiv just. <laughs> And the funny thing about that, AJ, is after that handshake incident happened, we're sitting there and we're saying, oh, you know, they're just caught up in the moment. They'll be at the restaurant later. They'll have a drink. They'll laugh it off. That wasn't the case at all. These guys had been holding a grudge for a long time, and they genuinely did not like each other. And, hey, you don't got to like everybody you play. There's no rule that says that. <laughs> Another pick, uh, okay. Deion Sanders. We see him uh, line up the arrow there. Oh, man. Right on target to the wrong guy. When it rains, it pours. And we've talked about this before. Eh? This is like that Rocky scene where Apollo's fighting the Russian. And just, Rocky's just sitting there like, man, throw the towel. He, Apollo's trainer is, someone going to throw the towel? Well, guess what? No, Nobody's going to throw the towel in this game. And it's a good old-fashioned stomp out. 
We still have a quarter to play right now. Of course, more Group B action to come. We haven't seen Joe or Goes Madden on the main stage Randy, yet, so we're going to see them later. Randy Moss drops a drag route, but um, you can afford afford for stuff like that to happen when you're when you're up 38 nothing. Another incomplete pass by McNair. He is 20 of 27 on the game, though. And this could be a problem. An interesting thing is you see D. Jones, and it's what Skimbo mentioned. He's running this nickel blitz a lot. And this is something that Kiv is ready for. And keep in mind, before D. Jones switched up his defense on the ladder, though he had the least blitz percentage out of everybody, he still had the number one pass defense. That's not been the case at all today. Kiv is just slanging the rock at will. So if you're D. Jones, you need to reevaluate re this defensive scheme. Do you go back to what pl to play in coverage and not run in this nickel blitz because it, it seems like you might have had more success with it. All these players are too ready for that nickel blitz and you're not going to catch them off guard with it. The young kid continues to run two clock, trying to put his opponent away, but he's also still throwing the ball. How much confidence does it take to just keep throwing the rock, knowing that if you don't complete it, it stops the clock. Hey, when you're up 38 nothing, you could do whatever the heck you want. He could come out in a formation that he's never seen before and come out and start running plays. I mean, he's just in complete control. And that's a lot of times in the NFL, um, you'll see teams, that's when they take their shots, when they go up 17, when they go 24, they know that there's more room for error, so you'll try more things than you usually would. It's, it's, it's something you'll see commonly in football. We'd probably also see a backup quarterback and running back at this point in a real game. Let's throw it to Zach. Knock, knock, who's there? It's Joe. Great defense here on fourth and goal. Shuts it down. He would convert and ice the game away. Joe, 1 0. So Joe does hang on to beat. Goes Madden. Goes Madden starts this group 0 1. He did identify Joke as being the guy he was worried about most in this group. I think he's got to be worried about young Kiv. Well, the thing, too, is at the Madden Classic, he definitely needs to be worried about young Kiv, as we can see here. Something that's interesting for Joke is at the Madden Classic, he started off 1-0, but then quickly lost his next two games after that. So he's been in this situation before. It's going to be interesting to see if he's matured a little bit and um, can really make a run here at this thing. That's a good point, RG. I mean, at some point, this is just unnecessary on his end just because he's going to start over 0-0 in the next game. And he's still only 1-0, and this is group play where to give yourself the best shot, you really need to go at least 2-1. and one. Yeah, I like his chances, though. Young Kid is looking strong. The thing that's sad about this situation for D. Jones is he could score two back-to-back -back touchdowns and still be victim of the highest point differential. You've gotten yourself in a bad spot right here uh, in this matchup if you're D. Jones. And he just never could get himself into it. And, and don't get me wrong, D. Jones is one of my favorite competitors. This is a guy that plays a high volume of games. Um, he's been here, he's been a, a, on the top of, you know, the pyramid for the last two years now. Kind of took the Madden community by storm last year. Uh, though a lot of players don't think he's the best, everybody knows him. He's become a staple in the community. And he's a guy that he can bounce back from this. You can't count him out just because of this one performance. Everybody has bad games like this, eh? This is something that happens. It's how you, it's how you respond to this adversity is what counts. I think another thing is he turns the ball over on downs. Young Kip takes over now from the 44 with the 38 to nothing lead. I think another thing to remember, too, is just how tough it is to stay, stay consistent throughout the year. Early on in the year, there was nobody better uh, except, you know, at least that much better than D. Jones. D. Jones was one of the top competitors, and now he's having a hard time in this first group uh, in a game against Young Kid. Yeah. yeah, and he's going to have to get over this beating quick because he's got another match right after this A. The meta has changed. <laughs> Definitely uh, not the same young kid that we saw back at the Madden Classic. 
against D. Jones. This time just absolutely thumping him. I, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a good way to get through this adversity is D. Jones needs to come out after this game and get himself a win. You can quickly get yourself a whole bunch of momentum. The good thing is, is as soon as this game's over, you got a clean slate. And we've seen plenty of players advance out of their groups at 2-1. This is a close-knit competition. Right. Anything could still happen in this group. He is not out of it, but he's going to have to improve some things, that's for sure, going into his next game. Not going to be easy. Everybody in this top 32 are the best Madden players in the world. That has been proven. So when we talk about, there's never, I don't think there's ever been, and correct me if I'm wrong, RG, there's never been a Madden tournament uh, that has really culminated in the top 32 where you literally just can't even debate that these are the best Madden players all in one scene. Yes, this has to be one of the toughest, if not the toughest championship field that competitive Madden has ever seen. That's the consensus amongst the community, and we're excited. This is a sport that is growing at a rapid pace, AJ. If esports is getting big in the world already, but if there's anything that's going to make esports big in our country, you best believe it's going to be football. Another throw into the end zone. And we're Newsom with the touchdown. Young kid is not done scoring. Yeah, are we not going to act like Kip is just not completely trolling D. Jones right now, passing the ball all the way up the field to make it 45 nothing? I mean, he was chewing clock earlier in the game, but then once it got completely out of reach, he said, you know what, I'm going to have some fun with this, and uh, this is ridiculous. Do, do you think the shutout is important to him right here? How, how important is uh, pitching absolutely. the shutout? I think he's I think he's more excited about the shutout than he is 45. 45? I mean, that's a lot of bragging rights. Like, if you ever try to talk trash to me, if I'm Kiv and you're D. Jones, I'll just start screaming 45 nothing. Like you said, point differential stops at 24 points, but how much does G D. Jones need to score something just for his own Peace of mind going At into this his next two points. At this point, it's strictly to prevent Kip from being able to say he shut you out. Because he's already going to be able to say pretty much whatever else he wants to say after this matchup. But uh, being able to, to avoid the shutout would be nice. But uh, unfortunately for T. Jones, he doesn't have much time. Uh, things aren't looking too crispy. Not calling any timeouts. He's sacked again. He is going to talk call a timeout. So D. Jones. He's not going to just let him walk away from this one. Throw the damn towel! Sorry. To quote Rocky IV. One of the better. Uh, it is one of my favorite Rocky, Rocky movies. Ford. I don't know if it's the best one, but it was one of my favorites. We talked about this before, too. I don't even know if this younger generation is hip to Rocky IV. That's one of the best games <laughs> of all time. Oh, interception God. by Young Kid. There it is. So there that's going to wrap it is. that there one is. up. There it is. There it is. Oh! Okay. All class all the time. You know what? You got to give it to D. Jones. Loses 45 to nothing there, but he deal, uh, he's the one who offers the handshake. So big respect for him for that. Yeah, a lot of respect for D. Jones. You love to see sportsmanship. We, we love a good rivalry, but we love sportsmanship even more. Um, D. Jones is going to have to bounce back. And if you're in this tournament, you better be paying attention to the young Kiva because he just put on a biblical performance. Yeah, and, and if you're a professional Madden player, you can't base your entire Madden career on one game. You sometimes, you know, you just like in the real NFL, you see some tough breaks and uh, you lose a tough one like that. that. But that is about as tough as it gets. With that, we're going to throw it to Drea. She has young Kiv. Thanks so much, Scott. Well, young Kiv, congratulations. I like the sportsmanship at the end. Tell me a little bit about that. A lot of maturity there. I just shook his hand. He didn't really do anything uh, to piss me off or do anything that was unsportsmanship, like unsportsmanlike. So I shook his hand when he offered to shake my hand. Commanding statement performance. What did it mean to you to have that kind of a performance against a bitter rival? Um, it felt good. I got to win these next two games, and then I'll be in a good position. Specifically a shutout, though. What does that mean to you? Um, I just played good defense, I guess. There you go. Good defense. Let's send it to Dave and Rico. Thanks, Drea. Guys, 